So welcome to Let's Talk Leadership. And as you can see, Brit's joined me today. And it's lovely to see Turner Ringstadt, who's the chief executive of an organization, a business called Culture Intelligence, based up in Norway. Turner, it's lovely to see you. Thank and, you. Uh, Happy to be here. Thanks for joining us. And the reason we're having this conversation this morning is that Tona and her team have uh, been looking into culture in organizations, specifically to start with in Norway, but with an intention to sort of broadening it out uh, to a, in a, a wider geographical sort of context. But there's some really interesting findings. And so we thought it would be great if Tona would share some of her findings with us this morning and also talk about some of the work she's doing with younger people, uh, particularly in schools and looking at uh, culture and leadership there as well. So. Tona, thanks yeah. so much, and we're really looking forward to just hearing some of the things that uh, you've been exploring and finding out about okay. uh, culture in, in, in organizations. So over to you. All right, thank you so much, and it's really exciting to be here. And uh, the three of us have worked as leadership developers in CCL, so a uh, common background, yeah. common focus, and we know that culture is always in the play when you talk leadership. So mm -hmm. I, uh, this caught my interest uh, 20 years ago when I was head of leading a merger between two major shipping uh, companies, and uh, the need for some data was yeah. really clear to my mind. We needed to understand what kind of cultures we were merging. And we found that out through a researcher in, in California, Brian Hall. And we started some work then to capture data for what is it that characterizes uh, an organization. So I learned that the hard way. And ever after, I've been interested in what kind of cultures do we see and what kind of mindsets and values are in play here. Yeah. So four years ago, I founded uh, Culture Intelligence as a platform to survey and capture data and uh, make it uh, vis vis visible, visible for people to see what is it that we have here and now. And then that is a starting point for what do we need to have here in order for us to be even better in our strategic goals or in our ambitions uh, of, of some kind. So, so that's the background. And um, working with this for the last uh, five years, we have gathered a database with 2,000 users. And we thought, what if we look at that as one company or one, one organization, one unit, and really do anal analysis on what is it we see in the Norwegian business culture? So that's the background. So we put all the data together and analyzed and visualized and, and uh, strategized around how can we present it. And the report shows us what are the key values in the Norwegian business uh, environment right now. And what would it be better if it was if we compare to some future ambitions or the strategic ambition or the environmental. Or, and so that made us uh, in a position where we can look at some of that. So that has brought some business to us, but mostly it's brought some insight and research uh, experience to how we can use culture data in order to understand what's going on and what needs to go on. Mm. Great. So can I just ask you, Tony, because often when people talk about culture, and especially when it's business culture or a company culture, it is translated loosely as the way we do things around here. Yes. Yeah. Is that yeah. how you would position uh, when, when you talk about culture and, and business culture? Yeah, well, uh, that may be what comes out, but what we need to understand is what drives that action or that behavior. So we are capturing data uh, regarding values priorities because we know that people, when they act, they act on their own personal values. And the values you prioritize the most are the values that will trigger your actions or your decisions or your relationships or all the things that goes on in business. So we have a formula that says the culture is defined as the team you're looking at and their values priorities. So if we can find the underlying values priorities in a team and understand the drivers that that is, we can not only predict the behaviors, but we can also analyze how are those drivers compared to other teams or leaders versus teams or another organization, we can look at the data that is underneath what the way we do things around here. Right. So, so that's so, what we're capturing. So does that mean that if you have an organizational culture, whatever that, whatever that is, 
but you have a team within that organization who have values that are very different, yeah. then, then the possibilities for that, that mismatch to, to generate all sorts of varying behaviors, varying yeah. viewpoints is something that you're, you're saying we need to explore. We need to, there's something around aligning um, the, the, the individual values that we all have with the values of the organization that we might be working for or the group of people we might be leading. Yeah, and, and, and this, is, this is the core of why it matters to leadership, because if you're leading a team, and let's say you are asked to, that you are doing a restructure, and you're asked to take on another team, so you mix the two teams, chances are that those two teams not exactly have a good fit. Then you need to understand what is characteristics for the two teams separately, and then when you add them together, you can do that with the data that we provide and say, these are the aggregated data and these are the values priorities for the shared mixed team. And then you can understand what is it now that are the drivers that will be important to, to see for this mm -hmm. team. Or you can look at, for instance, um, we work with hospitals and, you know, in, um, in, uh, in hospitals you have a lot of specialities. Yeah. So when you're, for instance, doing a cancer treatment, you would want the pathologists to work with the, the radiologists, to work with the oncologists, to work with the surgeons. Yeah. So all these specialities have their way of working, but you need a common shared culture in order to make that uh, collaboration efficiently and effectively. Yeah. So we're taking the units and designing something on the top to say this is probably the best culture that you can be working with. And, so that's and, the strategic part of it. So, so with this, with the report that you've produced for for this year, what what were some of the things that the research sort of discovered? Yeah. What were some of the things? Gosh, I hadn't realised that, or maybe yeah. actually that's confirmed something we've thought about. So, yeah. Well, first, moments. yeah, it, and this is the exciting part. So, our research in Norway, the most prioritised value in Norway. Guess what it is? I don't it's, know. Yeah, it's quality. So. Oh. Quality is, uh, and, and that means let's make things right. Yeah. We are in a safe, uh, good environment. We are not, uh, we're not, uh, we're not under attack of any kind, uh, and and so we we can sort of take take our time to do quality delivery. That is a great advantage, and and also collaboration is high, and insight and learning is high. So that means that we have a good, uh, solid ground for not only collaborating with each other, but also making sure that we do very good work. Well, um, what, so we, then we need to see what is not up there. Right. Well, things like, for instance, visionary thinking or innovation is not found. And nor are there very, very common uh, foundational values of uh, respect and security and sort of the more more foundation securing values so it's it's an interesting um, culture for for us to understand more in that in this uh, way because then we can say what is needed if we for instance want to stretch for a more visionary future um, we know that the digital transformation is really into all sorts of business now how are we prepared to do that how much change needs to happen here before we, we, we can do that well. And you know the values dilemmas that occur when you look at two, two, two values, for instance, the need to deliver quality and the need to change, which will be values dilemmas. And how much change do you need before it really hurts the, the quality? So these are the kind of things we, we have been looking at. The interesting part that we, when we started to dissect the total, um, the total participant. We looked at, for instance, men and women, and this is uh, this is the, one of the interesting findings. Is that it's it, it confirms, and and I'm really, I, I'm sort of sad to say this because it confirms uh, some of the stigma that men have focus on achievement and innovation, whereas women have focus on inclusion um, and and self development. So. But then if, when you look at it, uh, this is why we need to have mixed teams, because you need both. So one isn't better than the other. It's just that we, we really pitch in a little different, uh, and, and these are big numbers, so we, we trust the, the numbers. Another interesting difference was leaders, CEOs, and uh, no reports, 
where we saw the biggest difference. And some of the interesting findings is that the CEOs have focused on building teams, uh, creating growth, uh, making the synergy work, sort of leading the, the whole entire company forward. Whereas the no reports who don't have leadership responsibility at all, they were focused, their values were self-development and uh, quality and uh, learning. So nothing about team, nothing about growth, nothing about, they don't really care about the big picture. They care about being a good uh, employee and doing their part and, and going forward. So so that begs that begs a question, and I don't know whether it came out in the research, but is it that the CEOs are ignoring the whole idea of teamwork or developing the teams, that they have the vision, they have the big picture, they're trying to bring the organization together, but somehow there's a there's something not happening that brings these two groups together more? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know this better than I do, Matthew, because you've been in leadership for a longer time. But, but it's 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 some of the things, and I I don't know if it's ignorance or apathy or or both or what, something else. But there is, I think, a missing or let's call it a blind spot yeah. by the, some of the CEOs uh, about what is the focus of the people that are not in the C-suite. Yeah. There is something going on out in the organization that they may miss if they don't have this kind of data. And, and really understanding what is it that my people are engaged with? What, what is it they think is it valuable? What are their prioritized values? And I'm pretty sure that if uh, the CEOs got that insight and got that data set, they would be able to tune in much better to how to mobilize and engage uh, the entire organization, not only the leaders in yes. the change that they want to make happen. And also, uh, they would be better at recruiting young talent. Yes. Because they could sharpen up their employee value proposition. Yeah. So what we've done with the data is to, is to say that uh, how is this data set aligned to some of the things that will matter in the future? Yeah. Uh, and what we see is we have, pretty good, um, we have pretty good focus on some of the learning. Uh, we, we, that, that has come to an awareness now that Learning to work with intelligent machines and doing things digital, uh, the learning insight, all that has seemed to resonate pretty, pretty good. What we know, however, is that some of the sustainability uh, issues yeah. will have to be important or are important for not only now, but also more in the future. That is not a high score and neither are the ethical part of it mm -hmm. and neither are the diversity part. So we see some interesting data about how can we in the future make sure that that awareness comes up and that the strategies and the business ambitions for the different companies that uh, that are out there also include some of that so so they're better tuned in for future uh, challenges and opportunities but but given given the specific context of, of Norway and all well you in particular but both Brit and I have spent some time in Scandinavia and working with Scandinavian companies, might that be because they're already assuming that the ethical and the sustainability pieces, which for me as a visitor to Scandinavia, are always so important that somehow yeah. they think, well, that's been done. You know, we don't need to focus on that because that's already part of who we are and what we do as yeah. an organization. Yeah. Uh, that's really the key question, of course. Why? Why? And that's what we're exploring right now. Why is it like this? I think for the sustainability part, I think, uh, I mean, we are one of the biggest oil nations in, in the world. So we have an issue with how do we transfer our focus from oil to renewable. So we are into that. And my hypothesis is that really becoming a sustainable business um, may not have the large for, or the large impact, the focus that we needed to have yet. Right. So, so, so that's that's one thing regarding diversity, which is a really low score in in our in our set. Um, my hypothesis on that is that we think we have a very equal uh, organizational culture in in most businesses in Norway. So that may be the case. That uh, diversity here is. Uh, we didn't really think about it, yeah. but there is a risk here that diverse means something more than just men, women, than gen gender. It means 
people of different backgrounds, people of different uh, anything, uh, and really make sure that we can work well with a broader diversity. I think there's a, an opportunity here to, to go further in that. And the ethics, um, the ethical part has not really come to the agenda before now the last, the latest year with all the, all the things that goes on in the States and, and the fake news and all that. Uh, I think only now it has come to the to the awareness of uh, how important that is. Yeah, and that can of course be linked quite neatly to sustain to the whole idea of sustainability. I mean, yeah. even from a geographical point of view, I would imagine Norway, a huge country yeah. in, in the in the upper northern part of Europe, has a vested interest to to look at things that that impacts the way we live and our climate and all of that. Yeah, so that can be tied together when that awareness grows. I think I think so, and and I think what we want to do with this the kind of data we want to we want to accelerate yeah. the 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 change of of the cultures that we need uh, that needs to happen. With, so you can do it data driven, and you can do it consciously, not only with uh, we hope and we think and we maybe want to. Let, let, let's put hard data on the table and and make sure that that culture change will happen in the direction that you need. So, so you've dis so you've you've identified that there's this gap between the C-suite and others. You've identified that there are gender differences in in what is deemed to be important, either to men or to women working in organisations. Um, you've also been able to identify that there are certain what probably all of the three of us would say were really key issues facing organizations and countries and, and, and groups of people in terms of sustainability, diversity, ethics, all of which one might have thought were actually quite high, uh, highly sort of um, developed, particularly in Scandinavian countries. Yeah. So with the schools that you've now been working with, so how, how does that play out? You know, what, what are the issues there? Yeah, and this this is my my, my morning. In uh, this morning, I was in a school um, in Oslo, and they are studying leadership development. They're seventeen years old, and they're studying leadership, uh, which is I think very promising. And then uh, they participated uh, voluntarily in the, in the, my next research, where I brought in some of the scope. And they did the report and uh, for free, of course. And, and I went back to them and said, let's share the results. And what we, f first of all, what we found was that they are much more foundational uh, values in the young, in the young people than in yes. the, in the leaders and the mature. Uh, can, you, can you give examples of foundational values? Yeah, they will be uh, care, respect, belonging, um loyalty so so things that are very basic for doing some of the other stuff that we learn later so that sort of confirms our model that people develop over time and become more uh, values mature and can handle more complex issues and work with broader diverse relationships and all that but when you start out as a young young person you have more basic needs than, than later in life. So, so it confirms sort of the, the Maslowian approach to culture. Yeah, uh, yes, I think it does. At the same time, I think um, we also know from, from studies of, of, of older people working with established experience in companies that the notion of psychological safety, mm, yeah. which goes back to a sense of belonging, to loyalty, to the freedom to make a mistake, to being trusted, all of that. I mean, that really resonates with me when you, when you speak about these youngsters. Uh, I would argue that that remains very important even as you become more experienced in the, in the, in the roughness of business, if I may call it that. Yeah, and you know, Britt, now uh, when people are experiencing massive changes, in their business, we see uh, what we call the more more uh, uh, regression of focus. It goes back to some more foundational issues, and in some companies that are really badly hurt now uh, from from the pandemic, from the pandemic, they will be having more uh, um, what we call foundational the red zone cultural um, uh, markers. Yeah values and so but the, the, back to the school this morning and when i asked them about 
what what does care really mean to you in in real life? What is loyalty and what is trust? And they had perfectly well uh, resonates with with what it was. It, trust is someone to talk to when life gets uh, gets messy. A care we need to care about each other and be there for each other. And the loyalty is well, one well, if I promise you something. I will give it to you. So, so values for them was m some much clearer than sometimes it is for for some of the leaders that we work with. So, I found that really interesting. And like I said, these foundational values were were the highest. Uh, whereas for for some of the teachers in the in the same school, they had a couple of other sort of more mature values like presence and uh, learning and insight and also cross-functional uh, values. So in their world, the leader's world and, and the teacher's world, it was a need to, first of all, be present in the room and be present with each other, but also uh, to, to cross-correlate and, and collaborate. There was one more finding that I thought was really interesting. The people, the students were more visionary than the teachers. And uh, that means they had more scores on sustainability, human rights, and, uh, and global influence. And I found that extremely interesting because that didn't resonate with, with them being on the, on the more securing part of the map. Because when, and when, when I touched on, on that, they said, well, we are making sure that we will be part of what is right and what needs to happen out there. So today they were collecting uh, money for, for um, breast cancer and helping their peers uh, all over the country to do something with that. And they had uh, gathered money for, for, uh, for you know, pitching into some, uh, some organization. So, so their visionary, more global engagement and, and, and vision was really clear. Whereas the grown-ups on the same place didn't didn't have that. They were more on the let's do the job. So this was really interesting and very promising when we think about young people and the culture that they will build when they become leaders. Yeah, maybe that is also the Greta Thunberg effect from your your nearest neighboring country. Yeah, yeah. definitely part of that. But also I think the world that they're facing uh, is pretty challenging. So. I think they see hope. Uh, I think they see uh, that they need to do something more than maybe our generation, the parents, have done. I, I don't know. That's the that's a risky but really interesting way to to think. Uh, so we need to figure more out about what's going on in in these young people that are now starting their their adult uh, career path, and which they will be part of the rest of their lives. And and maybe it's maybe it's also something to do with the fact that if they're if some of the things that are foundational for them, you know, they have to have the security, yeah. the trust, then maybe looking forward, one of the ways that they can continue to have, they feel to have that security, to be able to trust things, is yeah. to actually make sure that things are more ethical, are more sustainable, yeah. you know, that the future um, is exciting for them, but on the basis that actually things have got to change, yeah. and that some of the things they see in, our, in the older generations uh, that are going wrong or haven't fixed things or maybe don't move quickly enough are the things that they're focusing on. I mean, mm. so how do we capture that? So young leaders, how, how, how do we yeah. capture that talent? Yeah. Um, well, well, first of all, what, what this is really, really has shown us is there is a, an urgent need to understand what your culture really is, what, what goes on in your, the culture that you lead. So this would be, if I had a class of young leaders, that would be my first message to say, make sure you understand the culture that you're part of. Because if you're trying to do any type of change with culture and you don't know where you start, uh, research shows, and this was Brian Hall's key message for me, make sure that you let people know where they start from. Yeah. So, so finding out this is us, uh, this is our culture, this is who we are, and here are the values and mindsets that are in play. Let them own that. Then secondly, and this is the more creative and design uh, question, if you'd like, where you, where you can use design thinking and, and really be innovative in a, in a cool way with culture. You can start to decipher your strategy and, and ask each other, what is this, this strategy requiring 
from the culture. What kind of culture do we need to have in order to meet that part of the strategy? So a systematic approach through the through this business strategy, or uh, through going through some of the customer feedback, or going through some of the market intelligence that is out there, global trends, uh, whatever. But find the relevant pieces of information and make sure that you understand that this is the requirement for your culture and start to add on uh, from where you are to what you realize you need to be. And then there will probably highly like uh, highly probable that there will be a culture gap between where you are and what you see is needed in the future. And then you pick out those elements and you prioritize them and you say, I'm going to work on learning the next year will be learning or the next six uh, six months or whatever learning will be our thing because it's highly critical for us in the future and we don't focus on that enough so let's figure out uh, six seven eight nine ten ways to really make sure that learning is put into the picture and the way we do business and for leaders to think systematic about uh, the culture like that they will quickly pick up not only what they need to be and what they are, but also smart ways to change culture. Yeah. So, smart ways to change culture. So, yeah. Because I, from what I understand from, from culture theory is that it is very difficult to change a culture. You know, we're, we're all aware of the, of the old cliche that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Yeah. What are some of the smart ways mm. to change a culture? Mm. Well, um, you see, Britt, um, I don't really think it's difficult anymore because I've seen so many good teams uh, do really great work on this. And But it needs to be structured and it needs to be data-driven because if you run into the culture without data and without a structure, that is hard. So that's unfair to ask uh, anyone to be a part of. But if you have a good uh, data set of where you are, if you have a good data set of where you want to be, that's really the starting position. Those things you need to make sure that you have. Then you can start the fun part uh, of your culture journey. And let's say, let's say, um, uh, let's say learning. Uh, let's take that. Learning uh, is something we're going to need, and we don't have enough uh, focus on it in our culture. Okay. First thing, what is learning? Let's let's make sure that we understand learning in the same way. Uh, let's find out what part of learning uh, is, is in interesting for us. And let's make sure that we set a goal for our team for w how much more learning, where, wh what does learning goal really mean? When are we doing great in learning? What does that look like? How does that influence our culture? And, and what I think is the, my experience on this is if the team has agreed that they will be focusing on learning, they have set uh, an agenda, they have decided on a couple of things that they want to do more of. It's not likely that they will not try to do that because they want to, uh, they want to succeed in that too. So leaders today, and this is the fantastic uh, insight, I think, all leaders also want to be good at this, but you need, need to give them uh, the toolkit that they need to do it, and then you, it needs to be data. So the teams that, I, that I've seen do this well is put it on the agenda and make sure that leaders follow up on it. For instance, if, um, if you were my leader, Britt, uh, next week you would ask me, Tuna, how much have you, what have you done this uh, last month when it comes to, to learning? Um, I, I really would want to answer that uh, positively and, and have achieved something. And if, I, if, I, if it turns out that I don't have done anything and you ask me next month, I will definitely have a good answer for you. So through focus, leadership focus, you will get the change because you know precisely what you're asking for. Right. Right. So, Tona, it's been wonderful to have the opportunity for you to share your thoughts and ideas and your data with us, which has been great. It's been really interesting. So do please come back when you've done yeah. further research. And we'd love to know more about how the, how the, the young people in the school get on. Um, I don't know if you're going to follow them you know, once they've graduated from school, whether you're going to sort of follow them into their first roles. But um, I, I think for me, listening to what you've said, if, if young leaders can find out more about what, what their team members value, the people that they're, yeah. they're leading value, and try and incorporate that into the way they lead them and the work that they, they allocate to them, and maybe raise some of those issues 
um, with their more senior leaders so that you know we start to build this connectivity between mm -hmm. as you started off by saying the CEOs who sort of are up here doing stuff and the, and the others who are sort of thinking about things very differently maybe the young leaders if they've got the courage can start to make those links but yeah. it, it's but yeah. do please please let's have another conversation about right. it because it'd be great to, to discuss it further uh, and and when do you hope to expand things a little bit out of Norway? So, uh, have you got plans to move into into Europe or further afield? Well, we have an international strategy now, but our platform is approachable from any country. So, Great. it's uh, culture intelligence, uh, and and we know that we can serve uh, anyone who's interested. So, so so that shouldn't be a problem. But our strategy makes us move into. Uh, UK, Sweden, or uh, Germany, or Spain. We haven't quite put that up yet, but we are on our way to a theatre near you. Great, excellent. <laughs> well, well, let, us, let us know when you're on at the local cinema. We'll be, All right. We'll get you back. <laughs> well, good to see you guys again. Pleasure.